So we're going to talk about the rights of pedestrians right now because, you know, here in Paris, we don't realize that um, because we walk uh, by foot all the time, but in other countries or in other cities, it might not be the case. I don't know if you ever tried going to L.A., for example, Los Angeles. You just can't walk over there. You just have to ride a car. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, I just discovered that the, a city like uh, Pontevedra in Spain, in Galice, you have 70% of uh, transit within the city that are do is done by foot because of a policy that's been uh, set up in the 90s uh, that's against cars. So the other, the opposite exists as well. But um, in Georgia, it's more like Los Angeles from what I understood. <laughs> so this is what uh, Elene marvillas julie is going to talk to us about right now. She's coming from Georgia, but not in the US, in Europe, <laughs> the country. Thank you, Elene. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for having me, and thank you for attending this talk. Um, since we're in France, and since uh, I imagine we're all sort of friends here, uh, I wanted to start with something that uh, I believe many of us can relate to. Uh, it's something that Saint Exupéry wrote, uh, saying that uh, the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or touched, but rather they're something that's felt with the heart. And I didn't travel all the way from Georgia to talk to you about Little Prince or Hinz Rose, but uh, instead I do believe that the very same thing goes about cities and the way we feel ourselves in public spaces, the way we connect with our cities through public spaces. So the way we feel about ourselves and the way we feel about our cities really has to do on how we manage and what kind of quality of life we have uh, in the shared spaces of our cities. So I'm here to talk to you about the case of Tbilisi, which is unfortunately losing a lot of its public spaces and is shrinking in these areas which are supposed to be shared. Uh, and uh, the life of Tbilisi is slowly disappearing, which is a characteristic which has been applied to this city. So uh, when I was a teenager, uh, you knew you had a good day if you were able to sort of find a new hangout in the old town or if you had managed to get your shoes dirty at the old Hippodrome Park. But uh, I also remember from my teenagers that a lot of the time that we as teenagers spent was accidentally on the rooftops of the city. And uh, now that I look back at it and think about it, is uh, I understand why we chose this space. It's because not only were these sort of romantic areas to get away with, but uh, these were also places where we felt liberated from the growing pressure of the cars in the city and growing pressure of the traffic of the city and the urbanization which was unplanned and not very well thought about. So. Um, Many of you probably don't know much about Tbilisi, uh, so I would like to give you a recap of the history of Tbilisi and uh, what has happened to it in the past decades. Uh, Tbilisi was carefully crafted around uh, quite a unique landscape and uh, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it has been able to sustain its unity for centuries like this from the beginning of the 5th century. But what has happened mostly in the past ten, ten decades is that we've compromised a lot of the authenticity of the city, which is uh, one of the main indicators of a good public space uh, for a lot of the new developments, as you see in the background. So this is a historic fabric, which is on the tentative list of UNESCO's World Heritage uh, Sites, which has been uh, sacrificed for uh, such very harsh interventions in the public spaces. Another thing we've done in the past decades, uh, due to the growing urbanization, uh, which was unplanned and happened uh, in the conditions of no general city plan, is we've compromised a lot of the green cover uh, for the new constructions, as you see in the picture. Uh, one more thing is that mobility mostly came at the cost of safety in Tbilisi, and unfortunately very few citizens today understand that what we have compromised most of all is uh, the quality of life in our city, its identity, and positive community values. So this is a poster from 1950s, and uh, I will try to show you soon what the contrast today is. So. While we are successfully raising the good things from our past, unfortunately, the future prospects for Tbilisi do not look very promising either. Uh, because uh, the post-Soviet era has eliminated the idea of city planning not only from state and communal management, and this is a standard <laughs> uh, living space in Tbilisi where you almost live in a well um, of a city, uh, but it has also eliminated the idea uh, from the mindset of the citizens. So very few citizens participate in the decision-making processes and therefore public space issues are very often decided towards private good, certain interest groups, rather than what we call public good. 
So four years ago, uh, I joined an organization which is called Iare Pechit, uh, and I've been leading it since. Uh, it is a pedestrian rights organization. And what we try to do is we try to inspire and empower citizens, pedestrians, by connecting them back to the public spaces of the city. Uh, and while on the other hand, with this grown uh, power of citizens, we try to convince the decision makers that cities are fundamentally for people. So while many of the talks here uh, at this uh, conference are dedicated to building smart cities and building smart citizens, a lot of the context I've shown you before might explain that uh, I'm here to talk to you about a city which has to be really fought for in the first place, which is uh, something you mentioned in the introduction. This is a strange thing for a Parisian to imagine. So I will now take you on what we call an ugly walk of Tbilisi. Now, this is an alternative anesthetic tour of a city we take our uh, citizens to so they can sort of reconnect with the new reality of the city, what we really are living living in, rather than romanticize about the heritage that we've received from our ancestors. So uh, imagine trying to, for example, walk your newborn through what we still surprisingly call a sidewalk. And uh, let's start our walk from one of the elite districts of Tbilisi. Uh, you would imagine that the prices of private property in this district would match the quality of life in the city. But unfortunately, this is what basic parking, basic sidewalk looks in Tbilisi in almost all, all parts of the city. So uh, while the fine for parking in, on the sidewalk in Tbilisi is about four euros, uh, even this minimal measure is not enforced and the government has almost legitimized parking on the sidewalk. And um, cars have almost become you know, a symbol of superiority in our cities. So the bigger the car you own, the more important you seem, and the more creative your violation or par parking patterns are becoming. So I'm not going to ask you to count the number of the different violations uh, that we see in this picture. But instead, I would like you to remember the street corner, because at one point in my talk, we will get back to it. So let's continue the walk. This is uh, a very good example and symbol of what a regulation introduced by the Tbilisi City Hall looks like. So they've tried to, attempt it to, on one hand, try to block the cars away from one part of the city as they forgot to do it on the other side of the street. Uh, but they've forgotten about the human interest, which is often the situation that we are facing. So unless you're a very healthy, motivated young person and want to jump those barriers, you are most probably unable to use the zebra crosswalk, not to mention that cars won't stop for you, and not to mention that there is another car parked on the other side of the crosswalk. So uh, cars are not the only ones taking away uh, space for pedestrians, but constructions are a very big problem of it. So as you see, there are laws in Georgia which are actually supposed to be protecting citizens uh, from these kinds of construction sites, but these laws are not being enforced again. So pedestrians are very often subjected to these very unsafe walking options. And uh, while um, some of these constructions may be for years depriving pedestrians of their right to walk safely in the city, Many of these constructions are taking away the very needed and uh, grow growingly shrinking public spaces in the city forever. So these are Tbilisi priorities. Uh, what you see here is a Wendy's fast food restaurant, but it used to be a public park serving hundreds of people daily in one of the central districts in Tbilisi. And while uh, our mayor and our municipality has remained completely unresponsive to the citizen protest about this issue, trying to preserve this park, our mayor was proudly uh, attending the opening of a fast food restaurant which took away the public space of the city. And as you see, there is not even a safe sidewalk left for citizens to walk. There is a drive that created instead of a sidewalk. These are instead the punk parks of concrete, which we get. So, and this is sort of an idea which has remained from the Soviet times that parks were for decoration and not for enjoyment. And all of you in this room probably know that uh, this park really fails to serve what is the modern understanding of a quality public space with grass and where people would like to really enjoy themselves and connect with the city. So. Another good symbol, uh, the people who are actually at the heart of trying to solve these problems, who are supposed to be the ones responsible for all of these things that we've seen, uh, are the ones creating these problems. So uh, this is Tbilisi City Hall's car, parked on the sidewalk right in front of the building of the Tbilisi City Hall. And as you see, there are uh, pedestrians, thousands of which approach the Tbilisi City Hall daily in hopes that their community-specific issues will get solved. But the only crossing option they have to reach the city hall is this pass right here. 
As some of you may know, uh, these kinds of overground passes, they are created for the outskirts of the city where the pedestrian uh, uh, mobility is not a privilege and these are for highways where high speed is a, a priority instead. There was a, actually an experiment he held here on this area where a Georgian uh, media outlet invited very well-trained sportsmen trying to climb up what uh, are supposed to be ramps for disabled persons. So not only were sportsmen unable to climb these ramps, uh, a lot of people avoid the difficulty and the discomfort of using these passes and again subject themselves to unsafe crossing options right in front of the city hall as this is the only option that they get. And finally, we get UNFPA, a highly regarded UN organization, putting people first to build better lives, proudly parked on the sidewalk in the city of Tbilisi. This is ironic because uh, UN's organization, on one hand, is our donor and funds us for advancing the pedestrian rights in Tbilisi, but on the other hand, this is what the city allows even such organizations to do and uh, to promote this sort of um, uh, priorities again in the city. So uh, my main goal uh, around this walk was not to shame one particular uh, participant of the uh, problem, but uh, I wanted to show you the context that lies behind uh, the deadly consequences that we get uh, for people in our cities. So uh, since we're not uh, technically speaking today in particular about public transport, I will only mention that the public transport is not sufficiently developed in the city as well. And therefore, while sidewalks are highly inaccessible, while public transport is inaccessible, a lot of the people choose cars understandably as a preferred way of mobility. So uh, the number of the private vehicles has nearly doubled in the last five years in Tbilisi, while many of these cars are diesel engine or second-hand cars which are imported from abroad, uh, creating further environmental problems. Uh, the road safety issues are also failing to protect the citizens from the growing number of transport and the regulations which are not in place. So these are the statistics. Now, each year about 600 people in Georgia die on the road accidents uh, and 9,000 of these people, 9,000 more people get injured in accidents. One third of all of these road accidents involve pedestrians. And the, as the side effect of the shrinking of the um, uh, public spaces and among them green spaces in Tbilisi and the growing number of the uh, cars which harm our environment is this number. Over 90% of deaths in Georgia are caused by environmental pollution and 71% of air pollution out of this pollution is car caused by car emission. So uh, many of these figures and... Uh, the daily decreasing quality of life in Tbilisi has not only caused public outrage on a number of occasions, but it has also put the urban issues at the center of the public debate. Uh, and there have been emerging groups of activists working on different issues such as cultural heritage, preservation of our historic public spaces, preservation of green spaces, and activists like ourselves for whom what Tbilisi really has become, uh, it has become a battleground, a battleground for trying to preserve our cities and our public spaces. So, as in all battles, uh, we also have to use our weapons. So, uh, one of the um, uh, powerful weapons that we've found to inspire people and to bring them back to the public spaces and have them engaged in these processes is art. Uh, what you just saw was uh, a public art installation uh, by an imaginative Georgian artist who created uh, this... Um, uh, imagination of a green grass, green cover, trying to protect itself from our all sorts of investment, political, social harm. And uh, these are the toy soldiers which have become a symbol for green activism, for soldiers and being protectors of uh, one's green spaces. So while many are skeptical about art uh, as a means for advocacy, we have proven it to be the other way around and uh, we have convinced our donors and therefore have been able to broaden our messaging. So here are some of the art projects. Uh, it may seem inconceivable to, in reality, uh, build a, a house here or to start a construction on this great public area here, but unfortunately many of Georgia's public spaces are uh, taken away and become construction sites very easily, sometimes with the permits actually giving, uh, given away from the decision makers. So this was uh, sort of an exercise for our citizens who had to deliberate whether this was an actual construction plan and whether this was supposed to be an actual actual house built instead of this public space or uh, come closer and to see that it was a piece of art. 
Uh, another uh, good exercise we offered the citizens was this game of monopoly. As I said, engagement in the decision-making process is a big problem, so we engaged children especially who were out walking on the main avenue of Tbilisi in this game of Tbilisi. So we see some of the main actors of the public space, which is a big black jeep, uh, which is a zebra crosswalk, pedestrian, a Georgian cat, and so on. So uh, instead of using this purposefully large dice to decide on the future of the city, children themselves had to move these different actors and see whether it was okay if a jeep ended up on a zebra crosswalk or whether it was okay if uh, a hotel was supposed to be built uh, inside of a green area. And these are all real-life situations which happen in Tbilisi. So uh, a lot of people enjoyed it while unconsciously thinking about the city. Uh, and this is one of the projects uh, which probably brought, brought most publicity to um, urban issues. The message was so clear and uh, so uh, powerful that even the Tbilisi City Hall got worried about it, and we were denied to put this artwork in a public space of Tbilisi. Uh, the concept behind this artwork is uh, the status update of Tbilisi. So imagine if Tbilisi had a Facebook account. Uh, you know how Facebook asks you how you feel or what you've been up to? Well, Tbilisi would say, I am not not well. And this is the feeling that a lot of the citizens really are getting from uh, this growing pressure of the city. So uh, not only did we find an alternative space for this artwork and not only did it become a permanent installation which many people visited, it was used through hashtags by trying to illustrate different other problems in the city or mostly urban issues. This art installation not only uh, pulled a lot of new activists to our organization, but what it did, uh, it ended up in popular media. So here is the artwork on one of the covers of a fashion magazine. Uh, and here is another city of Georgia responding to um, I am not well. This is Batumi, uh, a seaside city, which also has been mutilated beyond recognition, responding to Spilisi, saying, you know, I am not well either. I also need help. So... While we're bringing back people to public spaces and while we're trying to re-inspire them to care for their cities, another thing that we are able to do through art is to build membership. Uh, while people come and unconsciously engage in these events, uh, we ask them to register as our members if they want to contribute to better public spaces in Tbilisi. Another thing that we also do is we recruit volunteers at these events. So uh, two years ago, we've uh, built a membership-based organization which unites all of the individuals, professionals, CSOs, uh, private business even, who want to engage in the process of making our city a better place for humans. Uh, and uh, you can easily also register and support us, whether it's by signing a petition or anything that you can do while being abroad, whether it's just a small hashtag for Tbilisi, to sort of publicize the issue of the non-responsiveness of the government to the growing protest test of the citizens. Uh, another thing our members do, we have this tool on our website called Create Action. So once they become our members, so once we raise awareness, these people are able to offer us solutions to uh, the community problems which they find are important in their own communities. So. Uh, here, for example, is our member Nutsa on the right side. She is a teacher in a primary school. Uh, and as many uh, children also lack the understanding of what public spaces are and don't view themselves as pedestrians, as a right with groups, uh, Nutsa has invited us to do a small workshop and also to do an entertaining stencil workshop for these children. So uh, this is how we engage and how we create the multiplier effect by pooling members who we re-inspire uh, and uh, have them think about the city, how uh, then they multiply the effect in their own communities. So here is a, a student who has uh, already found a connection between a broad issue such as uh, air pollution and pedestrian rights. So on her poster she says that she wants to go by foot and that um, she wants her environment to be clean as a result. And uh, I hope you remember the street corner which I asked you to consider in the beginning of our speech. Uh, this is the street corner which is actually situated right across the school which we visited. So these children, uh, as you know, new soldiers who are now fighting for their public spaces also have put up this message on a ramp for pedestrians which says, uh, and for disabled people, which says that sidewalks uh, are belonging to pedestrians. So. 
Um, whether it's through awareness raising, uh, trying to promote a law, whether it's uh, working with the governments or uh, whether it's through art. Uh, what we uh, call as urban activism in Tbilisi, uh, in our community at least, remains to be quite an unreward unrewarded pursuit. We've started with Little Prince and uh, as you remember, you know, how he's cleaning his volcanoes up uh, in our city, we also do not know which volcano is going to erupt when and whether we are going to be in time for trying to to solve a problem of our city. So um, one thing that keeps us going uh, is the growing number of the activists and is the growing number of the people who we've been trying to inspire, who we've managed to inspire and consider uh, part of the battle that we are in Tbilisi. Uh, about uh, a year and a half ago, uh, our organization joined a coalition uh, of a big group of organizations who united to stand against one particular project, which uh, threatens to bring probably the biggest harm Tbilisi has ever seen, an unprecedented uh, construction which is planned in the historic uh, site of Tbilisi. So uh, this uh, coalition is called Ertad, which in Georgian means together. And you see here that uh, Yara Pechit, my organization, is not the only one in the city who uh, works hard for improving the situation, but we have organizations who work for environmental issues, who work for cultural heritage, who have all united themselves to stand against the symbol of uh, the destruction of Tbilisi. So very shortly, uh, this is uh, one of the protests where we've been able to mobilize an unprecedented number of 3,000 people to protest against this uh, construction, which is called Panorama Tbilisi. Uh, and uh, we have been able to start convincing more and more people through this project that Tbilisi is really valued to be protected. So uh, the project Panorama has been uh, uh, really... Um, considered to be an assault on Tbilisi, and it consists of three different objects which will all take place in the heart of Tbilisi, which really represents the most important public good which the Tbilisi uh, city has been able to preserve until today. Uh, this is uh, the protected landscape zone of Tbilisi, which is also part of the site which is on the tentative list of UNESCO, and we will lose our chance to ever become a UNESCO World Heritage Site uh, if this project is built. Uh, here is another object, another hotel supposed to be built um, in Tbilisi's historic and iconic Freedom Square, which is going to change its face completely, and uh, Tbilisi cannot possibly tolerate any more cars or any more transport in the center of the city. Uh, and the third site, uh, another modern construction of cable carts and cableways is going to be built on a 17th century site of the city. So uh, while it may seem uh, wrong to be drawn to the fact that um, uh, uh, everything in Tbilisi should stay the same and nothing should be modernized, it is very important to distinguish that uh, the uh, areas that you've seen represent one of the most important cultural value that Georgia feels proud about. And while we've uh, already allowed one of such glass and steel constructions to be uh, built on top of Tbilisi almost as a symbol of reigning over the city, uh, we, uh, this building is the one that looks the city over with more than just a hint of meanness because Panorama Tbilisi uh, is built for the mere good and with the mere support of Georgia's ex-prime minister, a billionaire, who most of the governments who've issued the uh, permits for this project owe their jobs to. So uh, as a representative of Ertad, I would like to urge you uh, and I would like to call out uh, for you, all of you who have spent your time uh, for uh, listening to this talk, to use your instruments and to try to support our, um, our battle for preserving Tbilisi. This is a symbol of one of the most important battles happening right now in Tbilisi. And uh, I had a different ending for my speech, uh, but what I found out uh, before uh, coming here was that about one week ago before my visit, this project moved into its final construction space, uh, construction phase, uh, which is is uh, probably going to be the hardest to stop, but uh, urban activists are now increasingly going to be mobilizing ourselves. Uh, and uh, as in the beginning we started with Little Prince, I will end with Saint Exupery again. Uh, it is the um, time that you have wasted for your rose that makes it so unique and uh, special for you. This is the same thing that we're trying to do with Tbilisi and with its citizens, uh, trying to bring back people so they can spend some time with their cities, analyze its ills and try to take responsibility for it. So thank you very much for wasting your time on Tbilisi and I hope it has become somewhat important to you also. Thank you.